Is he worthy? Is he worthy? All right, come on. Oh, yeah. 
of shit to destroy the yoke, to raise the dead, to tread the serpent. We need your power. We need your power. We need your power. this morning. Come on, put those hands together if you've been sanctified this morning. Come on and put those hands together if he called you by name out of darkness into his marvelous light. Come on and give God the praise. Glory to God. Just take a few minutes to worship him for who he is. Hallelujah. Has he been a good God to anybody that day? Glory. He's worthy of our praise, of our glory. The song just says, I worship you. Prince. 
Let's praise him. Let's praise him because there's nobody like Jesus. Praise him that he never left us, no forsaken us. He's never left us hungry or thirsty. We were never without homes. We were never without clothing. You blessed us. You covered us. You kept us. You kept our families. You kept our children. You kept our homes safe. Nobody like Jesus. Nobody. Nobody like Jesus. Oh, there is no, there is no, no, no. Come on and praise him. Put those hands together. There is no, no. There 
Rest on your feet and honor the Lord as we go before the Lord in a word of prayer. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, as we come before you this morning, what can we say, Lord? Except how great thou art and how excellent are you in all of your ways, Lord. We count it an honor and a privilege to be here this morning. On this great holy convocation celebration, oh God. So we humble ourselves before you, oh God, and recognize that your presence is here. And in your presence there is the fullness of joy and mercies forevermore, God. So we thank you, oh God, because it is an honor and a privilege to stand under your presence and under the anointing of the Holy Spirit this morning, God. So we thank you, and we, can't, we don't count ourselves worthy to be here, but you have made us worthy, and you have chosen us, oh God, before the very foundations of the world. So we bless you this morning, oh God, because you've been good to us, Lord. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves, Lord God. And we dare not be arrogant. We dare not not give you the praise and give you the honor that you're worthy of this morning because you've been good. Down through the years, God, you've been good. You've been faithful, oh God. And you've been the friend that's to get closer than any brother, Lord. And so we honor you this morning, Jesus. And God, we're asking that your train would fill the temple, Lord. Let your glory fall down on us, Lord. And let it be so thick and so heavy that the full weight of your glory fill the temple this morning, Lord. God, we lay down our burdens before you, Lord Jesus. And we cast our cares upon you, God. Because you've got the power. All power is in your hands, Lord God. And so we thank you for our salvation and we thank you for the honor, for the power and the ability to praise you this morning. Oh, praise is a weapon this morning and I dare you to put your weapon to work this morning in the name of Jesus. God, you created us with the purpose to praise you and we're going to praise you with the purpose in this hour, on this day, on this celebration. God, we're going to stand up and travail and cry out this morning, oh God. Let your anointed come, oh God, and touch and transform and make lives whole, oh God, and bring forth healing and restoration, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We expect you to do it, God, and we thank you in advance for doing it, God. God, we are praying for your maidservant this morning, oh God. God, let the word do the work, oh God. Make preaching easy this morning, oh God. Let us flow in the anointing this morning. Oh, 
We thank you, oh God, for her preparation. We thank you, oh God, for her prayers, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for her petitions, oh God. We thank you for the fasting and for the perseverance that has gone into the preparation process, God. God, let the word do the work, oh God. And we know that your word will not return to you void. And so we thank you in advance. We celebrate you in advance. We worship you in advance. And this we ask of you, oh God, in Jesus' name. A name that is above every name. I said Jesus' name. God, we thank you for our leadership. We thank you for their wisdom, oh God. We thank you for their sacrifices, oh God, for pouring into your people, oh God. God, we bless you and we thank you. We appreciate you and we love you this morning. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Let the body of Christ say amen and amen. Hallelujah. Please grab your Bible and go with me to the book of Numbers chapter 6. The book of Numbers chapter 6, verses 24 through 26. Holler at me when you get there. Just say, I'm there. And if you need more time, say, hold up, hold up for me. All right, I'll read this in your hearing. The Lord bless thee. And this is a, 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 a blessing that I'm pronouncing on Christ's temple. Every husband, every father, every mother, every son, every daughter. Generational blessings is what I'm pronouncing upon this ministry. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. May the word, the Lord add a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and above all the doers of his word. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. You may be seated. We're going to call for the praise team to come at this time again. Let's receive them by saying praise the Lord. Oh, come on. We can do better than that. Praise the Lord.
going to look for me and I'll be going home. Praise God. Certainly we praise God for all the praises that have gone up in this holy convocation. Certainly this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. We know the presence of the Lord is here, but at this time we're going to extend an official welcome to you at this time, and we're going to ask Mother Linda Lane if she will come and extend our welcome at this time. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. On behalf of this uh, Greater Christ Temple Church, we want to extend a welcome to everyone. If you come here looking for a healing, it's here. If you come here looking for salvation, it's here. The Lord is here. And while I have your attention, I will tell you this. For, 70, for seven years, I have been going in and out of hospitals, being tested for bone cancer. I have had chemo shots, chemo pills. Two weeks ago, I went and had a biopsy done. My doctor called me on Friday and told me there is no sign of cancer in my body. God is good and he's worthy to be praised. you to praise the Lord. Put out your water pots if you don't have a vessel. Wow. Yeah. And let the Lord fill you on today. Yeah. God bless. We're going to have a liturgical dance presentation by the Life Praise Dancers.
this mighty woman of God. Uh, she is very special to me, amen, because she is my wife and she is my friend, amen. And she is an awesome woman of God. She is the apple in my jack, the fruit in my loops, the lolly in my pot. Come on, somebody, amen. And she preaches, she preaches the gospel, amen. And so I truly thank God for her. You will be, you will be blessed on today. Amen. Some of you all will leave today saying out. Some of you all will leave saying amen. Amen. Some of you all will leave saying my goodness, my God. Amen. But however you leave, you will leave being blessed. Amen. And so I count it an honor and a privilege to introduce this mighty woman of God, my wife, Apostle Elect Audra Hines. Come on and give God some praise.
Glory God, hallelujah. If I could just get about five of y'all right now to just lift up the name of Jesus. Just five. I, I, I want all y'all to do it, but can I get just five of y'all to lift up the name of Jesus? Because he's been good to you. Because he brought you out. Because he brought you in. Because he held you. He loved on you. He should have let you go a long time ago, but he held you close. Can I get you to just praise God right there? Y'all looking at me, I said, give God some praise. Lift up the name of Jesus. Okay, I see. I see, I feel it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, you all may be seated. Hallelujah. 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 God is worthy and he's worthy to be praised. He's an awesome God. He's a mighty God. He's a wonderful God. He's a great God. God is all knowing, all seeing, all hearing. And I thank God for just being God. I thank God for positioning me. I thank God for positioning me for success. I thank God for positioning me. It didn't always feel good. It didn't always look good. But I thank God for positioning me for such a time as this. I thank God for God being God. I thank God for God sitting high and looking low. I thank God when man said no, God said yes. I thank God for when we was in the club and God was still pulling and pulling us in. I thank God for when I was in the wrong place, God pulled me in to the right place. So when I say if I could get about five of y'all to praise God, I really don't need y'all. I can praise them all by myself because I know what he did for me. I know what he brought me out of. I know what he pulled me through. I know what he pushed me through. I know what God has done for me. So I'll praise them all by myself. I'll say amen all by myself. I did not come in the words of Apostle Hines to entertain you, but I came to lift up the name of Jesus. He said, because if I be lifted up, that he would draw. Amen, amen. I give an honor to Bishop, give an honor to Lady McGriff, give an honor to whom all honor is due in your respective places. To all of the fathers, I say happy Father's Day. To my father, happy Father's Day. I thank God for every one of you. You all do things that we absolutely cannot and will not do. When you read the word of God and you begin to understand what the father is held accountable for, what the male is held accountable for, for the ladies, really get in there and study that because it will make you understand understand them on a whole other level it will make you take a step back and thank God because they're held responsible for things that we aren't held responsible for they have big weights from the word of God on their shoulders they're responsible for us making it in they have to make sure that they're positioned in the right place to get us in to get our children in to make sure the household is blessed to make sure the prayers are being heard to make sure see they have great responsibility so to all of the fathers I say thank you and happy Father's Day. Amen. Amen. I, I, I used to say well I, I could do this all by myself but then I started reading the word of God and it started taking residence in my life and I had a whole new revelation, a whole new understanding of, of the male role. Amen. Amen. And so to all of you I respect you and I honor you. Giving honor to my husband, my king, I, I, happy Father's Day, and I love you. I thank God for you. I thank God for you coming into my life and 
They said it couldn't be done, but you took a thousand broken pieces and you put it all back together again. And for that, I say thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for stepping up for my children. Thank you. And I love you. Amen. Amen. Now we tell everybody in their respective places. Let's move forward. Amen. I was really, really shocked when I got the phone call. Amen. And, and Bishop was talking to me outside and the conversation went a little different for Bishop. But the conversation to me was uh, a very proper protocol from uh, Minister Dion. And she says, you're, you're speaking at Holy Convocation this year. And before I could say anything, she said, we're all here and Bishop. I said, yes, ma'am. Because I heard Bishop in the background, so it wasn't anything else that I could say. Amen. Because I'm never going to say no or question anything. Amen. That Bishop says because I honor him and I respect him and I honor his authority. I honor the man of God that he is. I honor the times that we would go to the house when I lived here and he would be studying. And I thought, how can you have that many books to study one word? Like you're not, I'm talking, not talking about a word, a whole message, but he would be breaking down, dissecting one word. And I thought, my God. And I know my husband sometimes would say girl you call you want to I say if anybody know we could call um well I would say Uncle Donnie but Uncle Donnie Bishop we could call him because I know he don't know and he would tell me all the time he don't know everything I said but he know enough for me amen amen so I honor you I thank God for you amen we are going to get into this word um I'm not your traditional speaker but I will be obedient and I won't be long. Amen. The theme scripture was Joshua 1 and 9. And it's positioning for purpose and success. But I want to add a word in there. Positioning for God's purpose and success. So this message is called GPS. God's purpose and success. GPS. Amen. Amen. So I began to, I had a whole nother message and I was ready for that message. And I got in the shower this morning and the Lord completely turned things around, which is what he does to me often. But I just knew this time because of where I was coming behind this sacred desk where I know the word of God is preached powerfully and I know that it comes with dissecting and teaching it. I was like, God, why would you change up on me two hours before church is supposed to start and I have to go before Greater Christ Temple but I am, I am so desperate for the things of God that I will be obedient no matter what he says do. No matter what he says do. So I was sitting there. And as I'm sitting there, I kept jotting down notes because I didn't have anything. And God was like, well, you never use your notes anyway. Why are you tripping? You always get up and be obedient to what I'm saying. So I just said, okay, God, I'm going to be obedient to what you're saying. But I looked up GPS and it's global. It's a global positioning system that came about in 1973 for the military. And so for the military, it was a joint civil military technical program. It was what they used in the military to make sure that everybody was getting to the same destination, getting to the same place, making sure that they ended up, no matter which route they took, they ended up in the right 
place. Amen. And so I was like, oh my God. I said, okay. And then we were standing in the vestibule and they began to talk and they said, no, we're going to do this in unity. And we got it where the motherboard is coming out first and everything was, everything was being unified. And I said, okay, God, confirmation, confirmation on what you're telling me. So what he did, he took me to what we know as our GPS system now. And with our GPS system now, when it first started out, the GPS system everybody couldn't work it and you had to purchase the little GPS thing and you had to key everything in and put everything in like on there with address and everything that you were going to and when you were going to your destination sometimes it would say recalculating okay greater Christ temple don't trip God is just recalculated He's just recalculated some stuff. Don't trip. Don't jump ship yet. He's just recalculating. And I just want to make it plain for a minute. It's okay if I come down for a minute. But I, I don't like being that high. But it's it's like God has just recalculated. And I said, God, what are you trying to tell me? What are you saying to me? And I know they was getting frustrated because they was ready to get dressed. But the water does something for me. I love the water. I love being at the beach. I love being at Spanish Landing. So I'm in the tub and I'm in there extra long because it was like God just opened up and started pouring down and explaining to me this spiritual GPS. He says, see, they started in 1973, but I started before the beginning of time. I had a GPS. I had this thing all calculated, all worked out before the beginning of time. I said, God, what are you saying? He says, the GPS GPS that, you know, it used to recalculate and the reason it had to recalculate because some people figured they knew where they were going and so they would take the route that they knew, the best that they knew how and God had to recalculate. Some of us has taken the route that we knew how, the route that we thought we were supposed to take. Not listening to God, we take the route because what happens is, see, I know my way to Christ's temple. I know how to get to the Marriott Hotel tell but yesterday God began to show me when we got to the 5 it took us to the 805 which then took us to a whole nother route you see I was saying we're going to go from the 5 to the 805 to the 8 and I know where I'm going right so that was the way that I had it out in my mind I had it all calculated and I, I knew where we was going and I was ready and able to tell Apostle Hines where we were going but then I Look down and my, my phone was saying, I have a better route for you and it's going to get you there quicker. And it was other words, it was recalculating and I got a little nervous and sometimes we get a little nervous when we don't know where we're going because it's taking us in a place on a direction that we've never been in. But to make a long story short, it brought me right to where I needed to be again. I won't be before you long. It started, I said, I've never Never been this way before I haven't seen the stuff that I'm seeing so now I'm holding my phone up here because I want to make sure very sure that we don't go in the wrong direction and that I don't miss nothing because I wasn't familiar with it I just came to tell greater Christ temple don't trip because he's changing the direction. Don't trip the destination is still the same. Don't trip because it looks a little different now. It sounds a little different now. It's a way you've never been. It's making you uncomfortable, but it's okay to take the route because the destination is still the same. The destination is still holy. The destination is still God. So, like I said, I won't be before you long. In the GPS system, with the GPS, I've learned that it takes you out of traffic. It takes you around accidents. It takes you on destinations and places you've never seen before. 
It takes you in a route that makes you uncomfortable. It takes you in a route where sometimes people that was with you will drop off because they want to go the way that they knew or the way that they thought was the right way to go. And that's okay too. It's okay. Let them drop off. It's okay. It's okay. Stop tripping. The destination is still the same. The destination has not changed. God is still getting you to where he said he was going to get you to. Bishop, it's still the same destination. It's still the same destination. And I said, my, my God, my God. He says, now this is what happens. This is what happens. We're going the way that we know to go. And right when we get to where we think we ought to say, it'll say, take a left at the fork. The left at the fork scared some of y'all. The left at the fork made some of y'all feel uncomfortable. You never been there before. It don't feel good. It don't sound like the, 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 the story at the beginning when we started. It don't sound like, but the destination is still the same. And if you take a left at the fork, it's okay. You're still going to end up in the right place. God is just using that to take you out of traffic. He's just using that to get you out of some conversations. He's just using you to get, he's using the left and the fork to get you out a whole gossip mess. He's using you to to get you out of places with people that will let me tell you something one thing I learned about my mama and my sister I don't care how far they get in the back seat they gonna drive I love y'all they gonna drive and they gonna they gonna supervise from wherever they are and you got some people, Bishop, that's going to supervise from wherever they are. They not driving. They not holding the, the, the GPS. They can't see the phone, but they going to supervise from wherever they are. Let me tell you something. That backseat driver don't know what God told you to do. That backseat driver don't know destiny and purpose. That backseat driver can't pour no oil on your life. That backseat driver can't raise you from the dead. That backseat driver can't get you to where God has called you to be. I'm going to put a pin right there. Stop letting people tell you something other than what Bishop has said in the house. God has given you divine instructions. And God has told you exactly what it is that you need to do. And God has given you one voice for Greater Christ Temple. And if you listening to any voice outside of Greater Christ Temple, Apostolic Church, which is the voice of God, because he says, I'll give you pastors after my own heart that shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. He has given you one voice. He's given you one sound. He's given you one direction. But let me tell you something. Don't trip, though. Don't trip. I'm almost done. Don't trip. If anybody tells you anything different from that, you better turn and run. Because some people have gotten in Uber cars and never made it home. They have gotten in Uber cars and never made it home. You better hear the voice of God through the man of God, the set man of the house. And I don't know why God is taking me here, but I'm obedient. I'm obedient. You mad? Take it up with him. It just is what it is. But can I get, let me go and not go ahead of myself. God is saying in this hour, turn your GPS on, position yourself for success. But in positioning yourself, you got to be stern. You got to be firm on what God has told you. You got to be focused. You got to stay razor sharp 
focus on what God is telling you. I don't care how loud the noise get. I know where God is taking me. I don't care how loud it gets. I don't care who drops off. I don't care what they say. I don't care who don't like who. I don't care what they talking about. I don't care where they're going. I am razor sharp focused because I have a destination in God and that destination in God is total success for my life. It means everything to me. It means everything to you. I'm telling you, get yourself in position and be obedient to God. Can I get one usher? Can I get one minister? Can I get one elder? Can I get one minute, uh, musician? Can I get one dancer? Can I get the, the whip? Dion, I need you to come. And, and um, Elder Jefferson, may I get you to come? And I want Elder Jefferson in the middle because he is the closest to Bishop. I'm almost done, y'all. I'm, I'm, I told you, I don't have no long exhortation. Dion, come right here. Y'all all line up across with each other. Cassie, I need you to come. Diddy, I need you to come. Can I get y'all to even it out so that Elder Jefferson is in the middle? Mm -hmm. This is this is the this is the thing right here. And I know I'm all over the place moving. But the destination is north. Take a right. Stop, be still. Face forward. Know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. The winds are blowing, but you got to know that I am God. It's getting rough, but you got to be still and know that I am God. You got to stand your place until he says, now back to the left. Now back to the right. And, and this is how y'all got to be. No matter what, all of y'all destination is the same. The destination is right here. Now link arms. Link arms. Pull it in tight. Link arms. Pull it in tight. Listen, Christ Temple. This is how y'all have to be. Listen to me. The blueprint changed for some of y'all. With tears in y'all eyes, y'all still got to be like this. Because if they see division in y'all, then it fails, it falls, it crumbles. There is no more. But if y'all link up and know that the destination, her destination, she came from this way. Your destination, you came from there. Your destination, you came from back there. Your destination, you came from up there. Your destination, you came from right there. Your destination, you came from over there. Your destination, you came from over there. Your destination, you came from right here. But no matter what, y'all all are in the same place. Y'all all are on one accord and y'all got to link up and no matter what happens you can't let go let her start to fall let her you she fall pick her up right. yeah she go straight go straight no nope, you gonna pull her back you, got, you cannot let nothing come between it and when the enemy comes in y'all shall not be moved when the enemy comes in like a flood y'all shall not be moved you got to stay in the gps system you got to stay because the destination is the same you gotta know that you know that you know that you know that the destination is still the same god has not changed his mind because the blueprint looks different because people have fallen off you gotta link up and let nothing there can be no animosity there can be no anger 
there can be no loss. There can be no gossip. There can be no frustration. There can be no misunderstanding. Let me tell y'all something. Bring it together. And when it is, when one falls, you lift her up. When one goes astray, you pull them back in. He said, leave the 99. And I know it don't look like it. I know it don't look like you guys have been chosen. I know it looks like things have fallen off. People are talking, conversations are going. But let me tell you something. It does not matter what man says. Let me tell you why I know it don't matter what man says. Because when he told him to go get his sons, he didn't go get David. He went and got all the ones that that looked the part. They went and got all the sons that looked like they were the right ones and they were the right statues, but the oil didn't flow. Let me tell you something. There is oil on this house and it will flow forever, but y'all got to remain in the right position. Y'all got to remain in the right stead. There can be no division among you. There can be no division among you. And when it is, y'all got to pull it back in. Y'all got to pull it back in. You got to recalculate it. And sometimes recalculating means I got to go get this brother and bring him on up and lock him in because I need some more strength. And then I got to grab this one and lock him in And because I, I need some more strength. I need somebody to hold up the rear. I need somebody to pull it in. I need somebody a little stronger on each end. I need somebody that will fast and pray. I need somebody that don't mind interceding. I need somebody that's going to hold up the bloodstained banner. I need somebody that's not going to waver. I need somebody that's not going to be double-minded. And when I am, I need somebody that will lock in with me and hold me up and lift me up and deliver me and bring me out and tell me that's not the right way. That is not what God has called me to do. That is not where God has called me to be. You got to have somebody. And sometimes you got to come and say, let me in. Let me in because... I need somebody to hold me up. I'm weak right now. I can't do this thing on my own. I need somebody to hold me up. Because every time I feel like I'm, I'm making it, I'm falling. I need somebody to see my pain. I need somebody to hear my cry. And when you linked in, when you locked in, you don't got to worry about it. You ain't got to worry about it. Mother's born. Stay locked in. You ain't got to worry about it. Stay locked in. No big eyes, no little you. Stay locked in. When you need somebody to hold you up, it's important. It's valuable. It's vital. Yeah, the blueprint has changed, but the destination is still the same. God has had to recalculate. But the blueprint is still the same. God has had to take you around some accidents. But the blueprint is still the same. The destination is still the same. Where you're going is still the same. God said, I just had to move some people. Some people had finished their course. They ran their race. Some people, was they were done doing what they want. They was ready to be with the Lord. And so that, that don't mean that y'all stop. That don't mean that y'all change. You take what was poor in and you begin to use it. You take what was downloaded and begin to use it. No no disrespect to anybody but I take what was downloaded from Aunt Shirley in my life and I run with it. I run with it. I run with it. I, I live. I do it because I know that it was right. Don't trip because the blueprint has changed. God has provided. God has made a way. God has lifted up. He has undergirded. He has pushed. He has has given a newness of life but you gotta accept the new because had I not accepted the new direction last night I would have went a whole nother way that I did not have to go and it would have caused the delay for over an hour but because of the obedience of the obedience, we were able to get to the room before time. 
when you're willing and obedient, you get to the destination before time. And if you don't get there before time, you get there on time. So either way, you win it. So y'all see this. And I just use them as examples. But those of you that are still in the pews, link up. The destination is still the same. It's a military thing. And how often do we say we are soldiers in the army of the Lord? How often do we say we are soldiers in the army of the Lord? Well, soldiers, I learned, they get up every day. They get up every day. And they get their weapons. And they clean it as if they were going to war every day. They make sure their stuff is ready every day. What am I saying to you? Make sure you're ready every day. Because you don't know when one of them might fall. You don't know when somebody might slip. You don't know when somebody may call and say, I just need to be lifted up. I just need to know that there's somebody on the other end for me. Because we got to encourage each other. Because the destination hasn't changed. It hasn't changed, Bishop. The destination is still God. So don't trip. Because God has recalculated. Don't trip. Because he's changed the direction. He's just trying to get you there. Without accident. He's just trying to avoid unnecessary routes. And some of us, he's just trying to get you out of you. So that he can see him. Because he is attracted to himself. I don't care how you jump, shout, hoop, holler, preach, teach. If he can't see himself, when God looks in the earth, he don't want to see me. He wants to see himself. He wants to see himself. He recognizes himself. And he doesn't honor anything outside of himself. And I'm going to say this last thing and I'm going to be done. Ask me how I know that he don't honor anything outside of himself. Because he told Sarah. He said, Sarah, you're going to have a son. And then he told Abraham, he said, take your son, your only son. Confuse me. His only son. That's what the word says, Bishop. He said, take his only son. But he had Ishmael. But Ishmael was outside of God. So God didn't even recognize him. He said, take your only son. Bishop, you got four daughters. And if you said my only daughter, we would all be confused. And, and I think it would be a fight, Bishop. It would be a fight. But God don't have to recognize anything outside of himself. And anything outside of him is wild. 
Look up the name Ishmael. He's a wild child. That's why it's very vital that you tune your ears to God's GPS. Because any direction outside of him, he don't honor, he don't recognize. And any direction outside of him could cause accidents, it could cause harm, it could cause hurt, it could cause yeah. danger. Anything yeah. outside of him. Yeah. So don't trip. Because it's a destination or a direction you ain't never seen before. It's okay. Because the destination is still the same. And if you don't remember nothing else I said, remember the destination is still the same. And Greater Christ Temple, since you're still here, you might as well win. You might as well win. I lost a whole lot of stuff along the way. But I might as well win. Because the destination is still the same. Can I get everybody to say that? The destination is still the same. Apostle, you all may be seated. Thank you. Elder Jefferson. May I release a word to you? You're close. And this is, I heard the Lord just say for you too. You all are close to Bishop. But Mary desired a good thing because she went and sat at the feet of Jesus. And other people was mad. And other people was frustrated because she, they was working. But she desired to be at the feet of Jesus because she didn't miss anything. Now don't get this wrong. Stop tripping. I hear y'all. I'm not calling Bishop Jesus. Doing it. But in this season, sit at the feet of Bishop. Grab the nuggets. Grab the things that he's pouring out and he's saying. It's very vital to your lives. And God is saying there is an elevation on both of your lives. There is newness of life. There is a new direction. It is a newness that you two have never seen before. And you can only get it at the feet of the man of God. You can only get it at his feet. So sometimes when everybody else is working, you got to sit at his feet and be still. It's the still, small, subtle conversations that you're going to get and you're going to get so much wisdom and so much knowledge. It's going to be life changing. And I promise you, I promise you, the destination is even greater than y'all can even think or imagine. But it's at his feet. And it sounds like, sounds a little crazy, but it's at his feet. In other words, when he go, you go. But there's a song. They say, when I move, you move just like that. When he move, y'all move just like that. If I can break it down into terms where everybody understands it. You understand what I'm saying? So a bishop is releasing you sitting at his feet. A bishop is on, on the line teaching you sitting at his feet. That ain't a time to be wives, leave them alone. When they at the feet of bishop, leave them alone because it's going to bless y'all. 
It's, it's going to bless y'all like never before. Because when they go up and they are in the rightful positions and the rightful places, God is going to pour. And let me, let me read this and then I'm done. And forgive me for not being here, but God is just downloading. He's downloading. He's downloading. And I don't want to miss anything. And I don't have my glasses, so pray for me, church. You know, I'm young, so I need them glasses. And in Christ's temple, if you wise, you're going to take this for yourself. Elder and elder. God's decree. This is God's decree. It says, he will do this. Yes, indeed. It won't be long now. God's decree. He said it twice. When you see it twice, God is really trying to get your attention. I'm going to start it again. God's decree. He will do this. Yes, indeed. It won't be long now. God's decree. Things are going to happen so fast. Your head will swim one thing fast on the heel of the other. You won't be able to keep up. Everything will be happening at once. And everywhere you look, blessings, blessings like wine pouring off the mountain and hills. I'll make everything right again for my people. The Lord is saying that specifically to you too. It's God's decree. It's not man's decree. It's not man's decree. It's God's decree. And everywhere you look will be blessings on blessings on blessings on blessings on blessings. Everywhere your feet tread, blessings, blessings on blessings on blessings on blessings. You're not going to be able to understand it. You're going to be like, my God, what, what next? That's why the enemy is so angry and tried to take you out. Not knowing that all God was doing was making you a more powerful testimony. <laughs> blessings on blessings, man of God. Pouring off the mountains like wine. Pouring off the mountains like wine. That means it's riches because wine is wealth. Anybody knows vineyards and wine and kind of wine connoisseurs, is, they're wealthy. They're not rich. Rich is loud. Wealth is quiet. Wealth is quiet. And everywhere your feet tread, blessings. Everything you put your hands to do, blessings. Everything you open your mouth and speak, blessings. God's not done. God's not done. This is only the beginning of what God is going to do. Not like, he just corrected me. He said, this is only the beginning of what I'm doing. He's already began to do it. He's already began to do it. And when God does it, it can't be undone. When God does it, it cannot be undone. I'm living proof. And it may not be tomorrow, but it's coming. 
Christ temple is coming. Do you, do you hear me? We don't know the time frame. Bishop, and I'm done. Bishop ministered to us over 18 years ago. And he told me, an apostle, he said, go pray through the house you want. And go pray in the car you want. We went and prayed in the house. And then we went to the car lot with not a dime in our pocket, but our obedience. And we went to the car lot and we, they took us to the best one they had. And they said, do you want to do the paperwork? We said, no, we just want to close the doors. And they had no idea that when we closed the doors, we began to pray because the man of God had given us a word and we were obedient to the word. That was 18 plus years ago. And we had to keep praying and fasting and believing. But I live in the house that I prayed in. 18 plus years later. In the very car lot. The very space that the car was parked that we went to play. And they took us in the lot where they don't bring the cars out. You have to go to the private room from the very parking spot that we prayed in the car in. And all we had was obedience. I drive that car. Eighteen years later. And Bishop, you said stuff that we wouldn't even have to pay for. Yes. 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 My God. Come on, I drive a brand new Escalade. Glory God. Hallelujah. And I didn't pay one dime. My God. We moved in the house and we didn't have to pay more rent for one year. Because we believed and obeyed and stayed focused and faithful. And the GPS recalculated a whole bunch of times. A whole bunch of times in that 18 years. But the destination was still the same. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to pray, but let me share this with you very, very quickly. On yesterday, we left the hotel uh, to go to the garment district. And there was about six cars. We all left together at the same time. And for some unknown reason, at that moment, it was unknown. Uh, Me and my wife, our car, our GPS, we got redirected. Nobody else got redirected, but we got redirected. And we got there before everybody else. And when we got there before everybody else, then I realized uh, why we got there first. It's because I had to go to the bathroom. Now, now, now that may sound comical, but, 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 but sometimes God will redirect you for what you need when you don't even know you need it. 
for what he needs to do in your life and you have no idea what you need. And sometimes you say, God, what mean is this when you have no idea, but God will redirect you. He will change your life. He will transform your life. And it has nothing to do with anybody else. There are things that God will do for you and do for you and do for you and do for you that he won't do for your mama, that he won't do for your daddy, that he won't do for your brother, that he won't do for your sister because you are personally inclined with God. That's why it's called a personal relationship. And whatever you do, you build that relationship with God. That's vital to your life. And just because God is not doing it with another person doesn't mean that he's not doing it with you. Just because God does not move this person that way does not mean that he's not moving you. But you have to be in tune with God.